Your kid, like, she wants to bring the price down of fighting, and that's good, in my opinion. Personally, I, I've been saying that, you know, and there's other people around boxing that's been saying it, too. Uh, Ring IQ, you know, um, Showbiz, you know, a lot of these a lot of these guys have been saying that, you know, counterpunch boxing as well. I've been saying that, you know, there's too many pay-per-views, and it's true, there's just too many pay-per-views. Um, and people just overvalue themselves way too much and overprice, um, themselves and price themselves out, out, out of fight sometimes, you know, and the reason is because everybody thinks that they're special. Everybody thinks they're Mayweather or Canelo, you know, everybody thinks that they're worth that money. And a lot of, a lot of the fighters of today, you know, they really shouldn't be on pay-per-view because, Back in the day, pay-per-view was reserved for the big fights. And most of the other fights were just free. You, know, you just you just got free fights. Now, it's, it's not very many channels that show you free fights. Um, you know, and even if they do, they've isolated so many people because of their prices that nobody even watches the free fights anymore. You know, they're just not... As popular as as it used to be, and boxing in general is it has suffered from it. It's not as popular as it used to be because they isolated people with these prices. You know, Canelo Alvarez, I believe, was charging like eighty some bucks, probably more, for his pay per view against Berlanga. Now, the people he's targeting are going to pay for that because, you know, they just do. You know, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans they love boxing. And they're going to watch it no matter what. So he targeted the right people. All right. So a lot of people, you know, look at Canelo and, and say, you know, he, he made the wrong choice. He should have faced Terrence. He should have faced Benavides. And for me and for the people here in the United States, that's true for us. But for him and for Mexicans... And for Puerto Ricans, you know, this 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 fight, you know, is good for them. You know what I mean? And he's been targeting his people for a long time now. I'm going to say this year was, this, this year and yet last year was the strongest year for him to target, you know, to make deals with his audience pretty much. Like he went to, I believe, Televisa or something in Mexico. He said he was going to make an announcement. Everybody showed up, but he was just talking to Mexicans. And everybody else was like, yo, you, this ain't an announcement. And it's like, yes, it's an announcement to them. For them, it's good because they're getting free um, fights in Mexico. And he's saying, I'm making a deal with, you know, Televisa or, or I forgot who, or Telemundo or Televisa. Um, and we're going to give free fights to the people. All my fights are going to be free. Um... You know, from now on. Now, you connect the dots there, and you understand that he's making bank, bro. You know, he's making bank. Canelo's going to be doing all right, and that's why he's not worried when Dana White's like, oh, we're coming after you, and then Turkey Alex Sheik is like, we're going to eat him, and then Canelo's just like sitting there like, okay, bro, like, I'm getting paid regardless, because there's people getting free shit, and I'm getting paid for it. You know what I mean? But um, just uh, just Americans are like, we're not that good at business anymore, bro. Like <laughs> we're not, um, and the people that are good at business are fucking us over. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. But um, but getting back to what Turkey Alex Sheik said, you know, Turkey Alex Sheik wants to make it fifteen dollars, you know, for pay per view. That's good. That's really good. Now, the other thing is, a lot of these fighters don't even deserve to be on pay-per-view. I take it a step further, and I, I'm going to say it. Some of these fighters ain't supposed to be in pay-per-view. Shakur Stevenson, no. Like, some of his shit, even for free, I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> I wouldn't watch it. Even for free. I mean, unless I, unless I want to go to sleep and, and I can't, I, I have, I'm having trouble sleeping, then, I, okay, I'll put it on. It's like ASMR up in this bitch. You know, but 
<laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like I'm not some 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 of these guys they they're not even good for free. Okay, but a lot of them, and I'm not gonna mention any names because I know a lot of you think that these guys are the shit, and these guys deserve to be on pay per view. A lot of them don't. You know, a lot of them are hype jobs. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, just manufactured, bro. Like, a lot of the heavyweights were manufactured for a long time. You know, Wilder, I mean, come on, dude. As soon as he got, as soon as he stepped up his level in competition, which, believe it or not, is outside of the U.S. Because here in the U.S., our, our heavyweights suck. You know, so... That's why we're all of our heavyweights are getting their ass beats. Right now, there's no American heavyweight that's causing any any um, any, any noise. You know what I mean? And, and most of them are from the UK. You know, um, you know, Eastern Eastern Europe, right? China, China even has a good heavyweight. You know what I mean? So, it's like, what we the only thing we had was Wilder. You know, Ruiz for a little bit kind of popped his head. But just, just look at us. Just, just, just look at how we look. Like, Wilder, he had pop. But then you start wondering, did he? Because he did hit. He did hit um what's his face with a good shot? Uh the, the, the Chinese guy, I forget his name. Zhang. Zile Zhang. That's his name. He hit him with a we hit him with a couple of good shots. And Zile Zhang just checked for blood. He was like, Am I bleeding? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> and immediately knocked it, proceeded to knock him out. Spun him like a top. Like that's our American hero right there. I ain't gonna lie, I was, I was, I was, I was on his side for, for, for a little bit, because he, I mean, he hit hard, what are you, what are you gonna do, he hit hard, you look at that shit, and you're like, yeah, that's crazy, you know what I mean, so, but, as soon as he stepped up in competition, as soon as he didn't face anybody built here in the U.S., you know, fluffed, that's what I call it, I call it fluffed, because it's all, it's all fake. Uh, they're jerking us off out here. <laughs> it's not real. It's not. It's not real thoroughbred. Putang pie. Um, but. But we still got. We still got some medium boys out there. We got some medium sized boys, out there. We got a Crawford. You know, um, I mean, Shakur Stevenson, you guys like that guy, so I guess I got to put him in there. Shakur Stevenson, you got Devin Haney, you know, Tank Davis is, is, is small. Okay, he's, 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 he's not really uh, that big, so we're going to get him, we're going to keep him in, in the small sizes. For me, for me personally, I think he's, he's, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a little guy. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, Canelo's kind of pushing those those higher weight classes. Like that's the other thing. You could you could see Mexico kind of pushing up to those higher weight classes. Um, you know, Surdo was the, the other guy who who just bought Canelo, the Mexican dude. I forgot his name. Menguia, right? Um, kind of pushing up to even Ruiz. He was he he was a champion for about two weeks. Um, over there in, 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 in the heavyweights. So, uh, Mexico's pushing up there, and the U.S. is kind of falling off of the heavier weight divisions. And that's something to just keep in mind, guys. That's all I'm saying. Um, it, like, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not even making shit up. I'm telling you the truth. Um, but, yeah, some of these fights should be free. You know, now, let's move on here to, by the way, I heard Terrence Crawford was supposed to be fighting, um, 
or or, or was was trying his 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 promoter or his deal maker. I don't know what he is, but uh, Moody Buddy or whatever, <laughs> Jerky Out of Sheik, um, was trying to make a, a, a deal with a fight between him and Benavides, uh, the Mexican monster. And the only thing was that Benavides said no because it was too low. So he, he had to go, you know, he had to go all the way down to, to Terrence Crawford's weight. Um, and Benavides, you know, he's a big guy. He's always been a big guy. He's always had had trouble, you know, making the way to fight the look. Because let's say, let's just say it, he's he's one of these weight bullies. Like most Americans are doing that, you know. Not only that, most Americans are on some shit. That's why they only fight once a year. That's how, well, I've been telling you guys that. But um, but yeah, he said he said he said he didn't he he couldn't do it. It was too low, and I, and I get it, you know, I get it. Um, but it, it also shows you that Turkey Alex Sheik is trying to make fights that are convenient for Terrence. And I mean super convenient for Terrence, because even if he fights Canelo Alvarez, you know, what weight is it going to be? I'm pretty sure Turkey Alex Sheik is going is gonna to fight for, um, for Terrence Crawford to have pretty much all the advantages. So that's just something to keep in mind in... If this fight's gonna be made in the future or not, which is could be, you know. Uh, moving on here to Nahoya Hinuhei. Um versus TJ Max, I believe is his name. TJ Max. Or or TJ Dohaney. I don't know why I call him TJ Max. Uh TJ Dohaney, we're gonna call him Doohoo. Um So Doohoo, like right off the bat, like me personally, you know. Um, when when you're a fighter, I'm not a fighter, right? But when you're a fighter, like you you got to learn how to deduce what you're gonna face. You know, a lot a lot of times you gotta deduce um what it is you have in front of you in a matter of you know seconds sometimes, and you gotta you gotta you gonna sometimes if you're good enough, some people could just look at you and be like, yeah, he's a fighter. You know, the old school guys, they used to be able to look at your fist and tell you if, if you had a good fist to fight. Um, you know, sometimes they'll flinch at you and see if you could, how you react to it. You know, do you have good reflexes? What do you do? You know, they'll check your skin, you know, to see if it's thick enough. If you have weak skin, if you don't have weak, they can tell you all that shit. They can see if you have scar tissue, cauliflower ear. That means he fights a lot. You know, is he left-handed? He's just by looking at you. Why? Because that's their jobs, bro. <laughs> it's their jobs to to fuck people up and 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 do it easily, right? But and the way they do that, it, 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 you just get accustomed to shit like that. Like you, you get accustomed to 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 kind of a uh, um. What do you say? Diagnose people, or, or we used to call it uh, uh, sizing people up, sizing people up, which is something that's more street, like more more in the streets, right? But you know, they were still doing it professionally. There was people that that knew about that. Like usually, it was the cut man, right? Why? Because he's he's the one that that has to know more about the physical body and shit. Having said that, when you look at uh, T.J. Haney, uh, T.J. Hu Haney, uh, <laughs> the guy looks old, and the guy looks past his prime. The guy looks like he should not be in there with Nahoya Hinuhue, who pretty much looks like a freaking anime character. I mean, the guy uh, is in his prime. Uh, he has a lot to give. And when I saw this this fight, I was like, man, what's 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 he doing in there, bro? Like, he is not supposed to be in there. And like I thought, you know, I was right. He has back problems, I believe, or maybe he has back problems. The point is, in the fight, he was like spinal, and he just quit, bro. Like, and see, people were saying, oh, it was a body shot. 
Bro, he was, I felt like he was limping since before. Like, he, he had, like, a, uh, like, a back problem, for sure. He just looks old, dude. Um, and, uh, punches don't, don't make you younger. So, that's all I'm gonna say. Punches don't, don't make you younger. Um, and, um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it is what it is. I would like to see more from Noya Hinue. There's a lot of fights that he can make. Um, now, the American media will, would like to make you think that that Noya Hinue needs to come to the U.S. to be successful. Now, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. He doesn't. He does not need the U.S. at all. First of all, the United States doesn't have any small fighters except for maybe Tank. But... You know, Tank is, is, is a little bit too heavy, you know, from where Noya anyway is at, you know. So, and in his side of the street, in Noya anyway's side of the street, he has everything he needs. He doesn't need the United States, like, at all. The United States isn't the mecca of boxing anymore. Like I said before, um, you know, boxing isn't that popular here as much as it used to be, number one. You know, number two, for the same reason, we're not producing um, that many good fighters anymore. You know what I mean? We're we're producing uh, medium-sized boys, right? We're producing medium, medium guys. And uh, the reason that I say medium-sized boys is because when I was uh, when I was younger, um, I used to be in some sports and track. I was in, in soccer for a little bit, but I was always around a lot of African Americans, and uh, and they were all big. They were all like six feet, you know, and up, right? And I was the only guy who was like five eight, five nine, you know, and uh, and they would always come up with like these these um. You used to call it scoring, or uh, or what was it? Uh, roasting. Actually, they still call it roasting now. But and um, and one of the things they they would call me is medium sized boy. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was hilarious. To be out of the way. Uh, all right, medium sized boy. <laughs> it's like, what were you supposed to say to that? I mean, I'm. I'm I was I was pretty small compared to them, uh, but at least they didn't call me little guy or, or or Pookie or anything like that. But getting back to boxing, I don't know why I was talking about that. But um, yeah, no, Oya anyway doesn't need us, just like Canelo doesn't need us. You know, it used to be that you would come here to the U.S. to make it. You know, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere, right? And the thing is, we've always been good at promoting. We've always been good at uh, holding that microphone and telling people, hey, this guy is good. Okay, And that's really the main reason why a lot of our fighters became as popular as they became. And I'm not saying they weren't talented. I'm not saying that they weren't good at all. You know, of course they were. They're legends. But a lot of it had to do with the fact that we are the United States of America. And people just look at us. People just listen to us, which I believe that they shouldn't, because we're um, we do a lot of dumb shit over here. Um, we're stupid, bro. I don't. I don't really. I really don't know why people listen to us. Like straight up, um, we're not smart at all. And I don't even want to get into it. But just, just don't listen to us. Don't do what we do. We're fucking up left and right. Literally left and right. It's fucking up. <laughs> you could, you could, uh, you could uh, take the heavy you wanted, but yeah. Um, but yeah, you, uh, if I was Noya anyway, you know, most of the little fighters are in Asia and in the South American countries, including Mexico. Um, you know, none of the little fighters, like I said, we're medium sized boys. We're not, we're not here in the U.S. We're not small, but we're not big either. So that's the main reason why none of our nobody's we don't have any 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 heavyweight champions. 
you know, and the people we produce are like, they're not even that tall, and they're not even that big, you know, look at uh, what happened to uh, Babyface, not Miller, the other baby, I mean, uh, Baby Fat, what's his name, Big Baby, Big Baby, <laughs> Baby Fat Miller, <laughs> uh, <laughs> The other baby, the, the the big baby, the guy walked by um by Uncle Broccoli, um or Bro- Broccoli, something like that. I forget his name. But anyways, you know he he got his ass beat by uh by a guy who came out there in his boxers, bro. He literally was out there in his in his boxer briefs, bro, just out there. Like they just told him like a few minutes ago, yo, you got to fight. Who am I fighting? Uh, Big Baby Anderson. He's like, ah, no, baby. You ain't going to put your trunks on. You ain't going to warm up. Nah, we good. He just went out there and beat his ass, bro. And you look at the size difference. Like, you could tell, like, this is a fake heavyweight versus a real-ass thoroughbred Irish. I think he's Irish. Uh, Just just, just a big dude, bro. Like, the 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 shit was was you could see the difference. It's like looking at a husky next to a wolf. I don't know if you guys seen that meme where you're like, oh, huskies are wolves, and it's like, nah, they are until the wolf comes. You know, he he'll do until the wolf gets here. Uh, but when the wolf gets here, you better, you know, step away, step aside, and let him drink. Uh, but. Shit, it's just crazy, man. Like, but the thing is, getting back to Noya anyway. Noya anyway doesn't need us. Uh, don't make the same mistake that, um, in 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 boxing, uh, boxing IQ or Ring IQ actually. This is the name. Uh, Ring IQ actually mentioned it in in one of his videos that, um, Costa Sayu, I think is his name, or, or Tim Su. Made a mistake by coming over here and making deals with, shaking hands with the devil. Because now he's stuck over here. We don't know what he's going to do next. He doesn't know what he's going to do next. Um, and, you know, and it's all because he came over here and, 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 and tried to get a fight over here. Now, Fandora got lucky against him, for sure. But he also did a lot of good things in that fight. We're not we're not gonna take anything away from Fandora either. You know, his jab was effective. Um and it was part of the reason to, to be honest, if you know anything about the jab and, 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 and um you know how to set it up, it's part of the reason why why uh f- um why uh K- Costa Sayu or, or Tim Zhu um ran into that elbow. <laughs> yeah, because if, if you bring it back really fast and you drop and the guy tries to slip under your jab, guess what he's going to run into? Especially with those long-ass arms that Fandora has. You're going to run into an elbow or a forearm. It's it's actually a defensive mechanic within a lot of boxing styles. Um... And, and I think that's that's probably what happened. I got to go. I got to go look at the replays, but... If I was Noya anyway, I would stay away from uh, from the United States. We are good at setting up fights. We are good at setting up people. A lot of the fights that uh, our quote unquote heroes win is because they're set up that way. You notice how when a lot of our fighters start fighting in the zone and shaking hands with outside um, entities, they start to lose and they start to have a tough time. And the reason is because they don't have that home cooking, right? They don't have that home cooking. We know how to set shit up. We're good at deciphering fighters, knowing what their weaknesses are, and setting them up in fights that they're going to win or lose, depending on what outcome we want. We want. Um, so if I was knowing anyway, unless there's a big lucrative fight that you got to make here, and that's probably going to be Tank Davis. Uh, if if it's gonna be the big bucks, do it. But you don't you don't need us at all. The U.S. is not the mecca of boxing anymore. Um, we're not that good anymore. So stay in your lane. 
Um, yeah, that's it. Let's move on here, guys, to... We are about a month away for the big fight between Dimitri Bevo versus Arthur Baterbiev. Artur Baterbiev. Finally, I finally... Uh, I finally know how to pronounce his name. Um, I used to call him Better Beef, which is weird for me to for me to talk about another man that way and say that he has better beef than I do. Which he does, by the way. The dude's strong and he has a lot of testosterone in his body, an abnormal amount of testosterone. Which, by the way, a lot of these boxers have. I've been saying that for a long time, so. Um, you guys connect the dots. Let me know what you think about that. Um, and that's why I don't think he's he, he's gonna have a big problem. A lot of people are like, "Oh, they postponed the fight because he got injured, and uh, and that means that he's gonna come in old and he's gonna get his ass beat by the younger Bebo." Uh, that could be, that could be, but it also could be that he had to cycle his shit out. You know, and he had to wait a little bit longer or else he was going to get caught, right? It also could be that um, he is hurt from his, what is it, his, his knee or his elbow or something. It's one of his joints. It's one of his joints. I do remember that, and the reason I remember that is because joint pain is one of the main things that happens. When uh, you overdo it with uh, testosterone pills or shots, uh, rather, but um, I'm not saying that's what he's on. I'm just saying connect the dots. You know, high levels of testosterone, a lot of joint pain, a lot of joint injury, um, and uh, a lot of postponed fights. A lot of postponed dates. Um, he he's gonna beat Bebo. Okay, his style is all wrong for Bebo. Bebo likes to do combinations. He can't help himself. He likes that pendulum step. He's gonna run into something. Um, in between his shots, he's gonna get caught with something nice and sturdy, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, this guy really does have better beef than I do," and that's it. That's that's gonna that's gonna it's gonna be a wrap. Um, he's gonna try to try to fall back. Um, unfortunately, Bevo does have power, and he, it's not gonna be like Canelo. Canelo, you know, Canelo, he couldn't hurt Bevo. That's the main thing that happened. He could not hurt him. He hit him with some good stuff. He hit him. He hit him with some, some, some heavy shit. But it was just not heavy enough for Bevo because Bevo was a big guy. You know, what is this, junior heavyweight? Um, you know what I mean? But the thing is, that's not going to be a problem for Materbiev. There's a different reaction that's going to happen to Bevo's face when Materbiev hits him with something. And he, believe me, he is going to hit him with something. Ain't nobody slick enough. Um, yeah, he, he's not going to survive without getting hit. He's going to get hit a couple of times. I mean, is there a way that, that, that Bebo wins? I mean, yeah, there's always a way. It's always possible. I'm not saying that it's impossible for Bebo to, to, to win. You know, these are very good fighters, both of them. And it's it's very possible that Bebo could win. You know, it's even probable. It's even probable. Like, sometimes you, sometimes I say, oh, possible. Possible is, isn't important. Po- anything is possible. Is it probable? It's probable. It's also probable. It's possible and probable. Probable means that the percentages of of you making it uh, are high, or 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 low, or around mid range. It's fifty fifty. Okay, it's probable that Bebo could win. I'm just saying he's not gonna win, from my opinion. You know, I could be wrong. I think Bebo got this. Um. I I've seen a lot from from Baturbiev. I haven't seen that much from from Bebo. Bebo hasn't faced that much adversity. Most of most of his fights, 
end the way you expect him to to end. And he does the same shit each and every time. Pendulum step, Soviet style, corkscrew jab, uh, counter over the top, or in between. You know what I mean? That's that's regular Soviet shit. The thing is, um, uh, not Middle Eastern, uh, Eastern European. The thing is, uh, your boy Baturviev, he comes from that same school. And he knows how to deal with shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, it would be another thing if he was facing somebody from another country that does, doesn't know what they're doing with that style, that isn't familiar with it. They don't know the style. They don't know anything about the corkscrew and the pendulum and how they use it together to step in and out of range, step right out of range, and then pop back in. They don't know anything about the shuffle um, or the L-shaped step, you know, whatever you want to call it. They just don't know. So they, they, they have to study it, and then it's one thing to study it in a video and then go in there and deal with it. But Baturbiev isn't going to have that problem because Baturbiev's not only seen it on tape, He's seen it in front of him. You know what I mean? He's seen it. Seen it. Yeah. So it's not going to be nothing new to him. He's he's literally, that's why he's so confident. He's like, he knows. He knows what's up. And me was like, oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's that's classic um, hold comedy. <laughs> you know that. That Soviet style. I will break you. Do you know I, you know what's going to happen? And he was like, hey, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's that, that, that stone cold hard Soviet shit. Which is funny. <laughs> funny. Um Yeah, I got I got Batrebiev on this one. I think he's gonna ca- catch him in between his shots. And in the retreat. So when when Bebo throws his little combinations, he's going to be waiting for it. And in between those shots, he's going to throw some nice shit. And then Bebo's going to stumble back and try to use his little pendulum stuff to shuffle around the lead foot of, of Baturbiev. And Baturbiev is just going to step out with his lead foot and corner him. Bebo is not going to you see it coming. He's going to catch him with a 1-2 or something hard to, to the body or something. And that's it. It's, it's just a wrap. Um, that, that's what I think is going to happen. But anyways, guys, you let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys later.